How might I explain lumbar radiculopathy to a patient? Firstly, let's quickly recap what we know about lumbar radiculopathy. This is the term given when the function of a single nerve root is compromised in its conduction. It's often, but not always, accompanied by radicular pain, which is one of the most commonly experienced forms of neuropathic pain. Lumbar radiculopathy has a relatively high sensitivity, but unknown specificity for a herniated intervertebral disc. Hence, we often see it be referred to as a symptomatic disc herniation. Although historically it's been thought that the disc herniation mechanically compresses the nerve root, it's now considered that a predominantly inflammatory mediated response is responsible for the pain and changes in nerve conduction. This is why it might not be entirely accurate or helpful to tell someone they have a pinched or trapped nerve. So what should I relay to the patient? It's helpful to ask the patient if they know anything about the spine or what they've already been told or has read. Get their input. They may know a lot or very little. It might be helpful to show them a model of the spine, indicate the orientation of it and the discs, bones, and also where the nerves exit the spine. I might explain that these nerves join together after they exit the spine and travel down the leg in what's called the sciatic nerve. This large nerve provides movement and sensation to the leg and foot. I can then give a bit more detail. Most of these conditions that result in numbness, like what we found on the testing, are caused by an injury to one of the discs in the lower back. Having an injury to a disc is very common and fortunately, in the vast majority of cases, these injuries heal and resolve like any other tissue. When there has been an injury to a disc, this sets off a significant inflammation response and other chemical reactions around the discs. And the disc sits very, very close to the nerve exiting the spine. And I can show this on the spine. Nerves are very, very sensitive. So any inflammation easily results in pain to that nerve that shows up as that sharp shooting pain into the leg, like what they've been getting. When the inflammation is significant enough from the disc injury, it can actually compromise the ability of that nerve to send messages to and from the leg and foot. And this can result in numbness, like what you've noticed. The good news is that we expect this aggravation of the nerve to settle quickly and for the numbness to resolve very quickly as well certainly within days to weeks. Injuries to the disc also resolve quite quickly as well, just like any other non-serious injury. What is important with an injury to a disc, to keep in mind, is that we don't need to stop moving like we would with some other injuries. People with this condition actually have better outcomes if they keep active with normal day-to-day -day things. And research strongly supports this as well. It's very rare for disc injuries to suddenly get worse, although sometimes the pain can fluctuate as nerves are really sensitive. Often we have the question of, do I have a pinched nerve or a trapped nerve? Sometimes you might read about this condition being called a pinched or trapped nerve, and this is a bit of a misnomer. What we know from the research is that for most of these conditions, the nerve doesn't actually get pinched or trapped. It's actually the inflammation and associated swelling around the nerve that's the biggest cause of the pain. I've read that a lot of people end up needing surgery. That's often a common comment or question from a patient. This condition is quite common and the vast majority of people make a full recovery. But it is true that some people may need to go on and will benefit from surgery. But this is definitely a small minority. We'll certainly monitor how your symptoms progress and if they're not progressing as we expect, especially if the numbness doesn't resolve within the next few weeks as we expect it to, we will be referring you on for imaging. This is very unlikely, however, but it may help to know we have a backup plan if things don't improve as we expect. Often patients will ask, is this because of my weak back or poor posture? This condition can happen to anyone, but it is especially prevalent between the ages of 40 and 60. There's likely nothing that has led to this specifically or could have been done to prevent it. A question I often get from students is when a patient has a normal neurological examination but has radicular pain, how do we explain radicular pain? Well, what do we know? 
If there are no neurological symptoms and the neurological examination is normal, the patient can still have radicular pain. This is often described as sharp shooting pain down the leg. It can be mild or severe and can be incredibly concerning and can be really disabling. Research has shown that people with back pain and associated neuropathic pain have higher levels of pain, disability, and reduced quality of life compared to those with nonspecific low back pain. What else do we know? The sensation of radicular pain is quite different from somatic referred pain due to the structures affected, typically the dorsal root ganglion in radicular pain. Compared to somatic referred pain, there's a high proportion of cutaneous afferent nerve fibers affected. So this explains why the pain often feels near the surface or even in the skin for your patient. We can relay to the patient that one of their nerves exiting the spine is involved in their back pain. And there are a number of causes for this. The most common being the nerve that exits the spine is aggravated by an inflammatory response. Like in radiculopathy, we can tell them about the continuity of the nervous system, how these nerves exiting the spine go all the way down the leg and into the foot. This explains why the symptoms are quite nervy in nature and why they're traveling quite far as well. We can let them know that nerves are very, very sensitive. So even though the nerve symptoms are really strong, they're not usually reflective of the amount of tissue damage or whether an injury is present. And importantly, there are strategies we can use and apply to try and reduce the nerve sensitivity. So here's a summary of what we've covered. Like any diagnosis, Give the patient an explanation in terms they understand, especially outlining any particularly concerning symptoms like nerve changes. Let the patient know what to expect, especially in relation to their recovery, and what the backup plan is if they don't improve as we expect. Radiculopathy often comes with additional concerns around what the cause is and what might happen. Acknowledge these concerns in active ways and let the patient know that these symptoms will be closely monitored.